Hello, and welcome to Under 1000. My name's Thomas Flower, and each episode I'll read you a piece of flash fiction. All of the stories are 1,000 words or less. Today, I'll be reading Bright Burning Idols. She didn't know what compelled her to return to them. Maybe it was some buried instinct within her. Maybe it was just a sudden, spontaneous desire, born of nothing in particular. Whatever it was, she knew she must go back. The people gathered, watching the stars, waiting for a sign. The prophets had predicted the return of their great leader for many years, so many, in fact, that it was hard to genuinely believe any more, but most tried nonetheless. Each week they gathered to watch the stars, waiting for the sign that they were sure would one day come. The choice to leave this holy place was a strange one to make. Up here she could live in peace and harmony as long as she wished. To choose, deliberately, to fall from here back onto that hungry, yearning world of struggle and fear seemed like something no rational being would do. But fall she did, dropping through the clouds like a branch from a tree, burning up brightly as she did, leaving shards of dust in her wake, the fire reducing her to a mortal once again. That night they saw it, the bright red flame streaking all the way across the sky. The prophets had said it would one day come. Could it be that they had actually spoken the truth? It was almost too much to think about. But the people knew what this should mean. Soon, she would return to them. She awoke, in a daze, almost unable to remember the very choice that had brought her here. Stumbling raggedly away from the crater her impact had formed, she was unsure of what she should do next, and doubted herself for the first time. But in the distance she saw lights, shining brightly, burning themselves into the blackness of this wild and rugged place. She knew that she must go there. The people waited for several nights. At first, the town was filled with excitement. The rumour mill went into overdrive, spreading strange and outlandish stories about what would be coming for them now that the prophecies were proven correct. But as the days passed, and still nothing appeared, they grew disillusioned, beginning to doubt either their own eyes or their own faith, whichever was the least strong in each case. While some still waited, with undiluted eagerness, the vast majority returned to their usual lives, trying to put behind them the strange, fiery line they had seen burn its way across the heavens. She did not know how she managed to survive, to make it to this place. Over all that time, her lips dried, and her stomach rumbled infinitely on, signs of her newly acquired mortality. Yet somehow, her freshly weakened flesh pushed on regardless, not surrendering to the grasp of death like all others would. She stumbled blindly towards those lights, knowing nothing other than her own unexplainable desire to reach them. And when she did, she finally understood why she had been called. She has arrived! The prophet's wisdom is proved once more! The cry rang through the town, spreading from street to street, neighbour to neighbour. The story went that a woman like those in the statues had stumbled suddenly up to the town gates, almost collapsing from exhaustion. The guards had recognised her immediately and carried her into the most holy place hoping that the monks could revive her through faith and knowledge alone. And as the story spread, the crowd thronged to the temple, eager to see and hear what their Messiah had returned to impart to them. They hoped to receive her benevolent love, to feel the warmth of being bathed in her heavenly affection, just like their ancestors had so many years ago. As she came to, she felt confused. The monk stepped back in quick, shocked reverence as she opened her eyes. 
but it was not this that surprised her. Rather, she found herself in some strange building, a thousand copies of her own face staring back at her, in paintings, statues, glass, gold, colour, she could see herself reflected over and over again. It confused and disorientated her. What did this mean? The monk addressed the people with a firm, calm reverence. She has awakened, and will wish to speak with us shortly, I am certain. Until then, let the faithful remain and heed the words she will impart on to us. This is an opportunity so rare that few will ever behold it, my children. Be sure that you are one of the lucky ones. She did not understand. They wanted her to speak to the people? For what? She could not recognise this gift of faith she had given them so many years ago. But what are all these statues for? she asked desperately. For you, of course, the monk reassured her, to glorify your name with the highest our kind can create. I never asked this of them, was all she could think. I never wanted this at all. The people watched, dismayed, unable to comprehend. The temple, this most holy of places, was crumbling visibly around them. Gold columns and jewel-encrusted likenesses of the Messiah came tumbling down, striking the earth below with almighty blows. Before the greedy amongst them could scrabble and scrap over the riches, they melted away, forming red-hot rivers of molten metal and minerals. Soon, all that remained was a hardened tomb, a scar upon the skyline formed of all that they had once held precious. She knew she'd made the right decision. Though she had encased herself in this rotted temple for her final days, she would ascend with righteousness. The people did not deserve her blessings if they could not honour them properly. What did a god want with gold and riches, after all? Perhaps they would finally learn. She could only live in faith. Thank you for listening to Under 1000. I'm your host, Thomas Flower. To follow the show online, look for Under 1000 Pod on Twitter or Facebook. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash under1000pod, where you can sign up to read each month's stories in advance, as well as to have a thank you be read during these credits. The theme music is an instrumental version of In Between Days by Nick Tate and the Sharks. To hear the full song and more from the same EP, go to Nick Tate, N-I-C-T-A-T-E, and the sharks.bandcamp.com or search for them on your favourite streaming platform. I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you'll join me again next time for some more super short fiction.